All right. So we're going to try something different today. Why not? Because every single up and down that I give for today's NXT is going to be done within the confines of kayfabe. That's right. I'm going to regret this, but let me put on my kayfabe hat. And let's see what we can do. <laughs> Hello, my friends. Welcome to Ups and Downs, and let's do exactly that for NXT. So our first match this week was to see who was the final person going into the Women's Iron Survivor Challenge match. A good grief. Think of the pressure. Because it did mean if Fallon Henley, Thea Hale, Roxanne Perez or Kiana James weren't victorious here, that when Deadline rolls around in but a few days, they're going to have nothing to do and they're going to have to sit at home and play Nintendo. Which is not so bad. The Switch is pretty good. Now, of course, I was worried straight away because over the last few weeks, Roxanne Perez and Kiana James just cannot get on with each other. Like seven days ago, Roxanne stole the ring bell and she distracted James, who was in a completely different match. Look, I don't want to talk about morals here. That doesn't sound like a very nice thing to do. We also saw that in the week, James had found Perez and smacked her one in the performance center with her loaded handbag. So I was like, this the entire time. I was like, well, why is she allowed to compete? She should be in jail. Crime counter, one. It also meant that Roxanne was at a disadvantage because she was like, oh my gosh, I'm still feeling the pain from all of that. But it actually worked out quite well for her. There was Tower of Doom spot in the middle of this. She was not involved. That didn't last long, though, because her and Kiana then fought onto Barry Barricade when they fell off and they went crashing through Alan the Announce table. So it just goes to show. If you do hate someone, do not let it consume you, because now neither of these two jabrones are going to the Iron Survivor. And in fact, that is going to Fallon Henley, because she was like, all right, fine. Well, it just leaves you one person. She need Thea Hale right in the head, and she got the one, two, three. Now, this is good on the one hand, because she can join her friend Josh Briggs, who was in the men's one. But when it comes to Brooks Jensen, I'm a bit worried he's going to be a little bit jealous. Still, good for her, though. She now does have an opportunity... I shall give it an up. This is when we saw that Ilya Dragunov had only just arrived at the venue. I was like, dude, you're meant to be the NXT champion. And you can't even be on time? I mean, what kind of example is this setting? So I couldn't help myself. He has to get it down. I was really disappointed. We then saw that the Metaphor and Alpha Academy had been mucking around on TikTok. And I was a bit like, who is broadcasting these videos? And where did they come from? When well, it was time for an interview with our NXT Women's Champion, Lyra Valkyria. Of course, this was a massive waste of time. Because after she had gone, oh my gosh, who was going to win the Iron Survivor? She got interrupted by Lola Vice and Electra Lopez. Vice just wanted a reminder. Haha, I do have this contract for any kind of a championship. So maybe I'll use it on you. Seems a little bit mean. When Tate and Paxi just walked in and was like, Haha, I don't really like you, Lola Vice. Maybe we should have a match later. There's also a heavy situation here that Paxi is still creeping around, spying on people. So look, this is going to become a theme throughout the evening. But if you are in NXT management, maybe you want to look into it. When my word. As we do know, Wesley did win an amazing four-way number one contender match last week to face Dominic Mysterio at deadline for the North American Championship. But here, he came out with a damn cane and he told us that he requires major back surgery and he's going to be out for ages. I'm just going to take my stupid cave hape out for this. This was like the most horrible and emotional thing I've seen in ages. The dude is clearly torn up about it. Big Joseph on commentary even insinuated that it could be up to 12 months until he's back in here. Honestly, on the one hand, I would tell you do not watch this because it will break your heart. But on the other, maybe you should. We all need to support Wes. So this really is as real as it gets. And if you do go on social media, you will see an outpouring of love. And I would like to do the same here. I mean, can you imagine how hard this must be? Especially because he only returned a couple of weeks ago. So we keep everything crossed for Wesley. And we send him all the positivity. I truly do hope you're back soon. Because he is an asshole, though. Dominic Mysterio then walked out here. And he was all like, <laughs> this is the best news ever. Because it means on Saturday, I no longer have an opponent. So maybe I'll just go home and chill with my mammy. Somehow, though, Rey Mysterio then appeared on the big screen. I was like, what is going on? He was like, well, son of mine, who I regret having. None of this is true, because you are going to have a match, and I'm going to be in this guy's corner, because at deadline, it is now you, Mr. Dommy Boy, taking on none other than Dragon Lee. What the flub? Dragon was then out the venue, so he must have been tipped off earlier, and he whooped Dominic's ass before he ran away. But this is what we are doing in a couple of days. It does pick up a very interesting question because the Dragon is getting a mega push on SmackDown right now. So does he win this championship? Maybe he does. This was a totally wild 10 minutes, but we do just focus on the positives here. Dragon Lee getting an opportunity is always going to be good because over the last six weeks, man, he has totally smashed it. 
give it an up. The pros then continued on this show because there was going to be loads of them because Keanu James in the training's room and she was like, if I ever see Roxanne Perez again, I'm going to whoop her ass. And Roxanne was literally right next to her. So they got into a fight. It then turned out that Ava Rain was in control for some reason. Because later on in the show, she let everyone know that they are going to have a fight deadline and it's going to be in a cage match. And I was like, well, I guess if you do want to try and have them settle the score, you may as well do it in a big old steel structure. Turns out we've got more tournaments coming too because it's the men's breakout competition soon. And here are your contenders. Riley Osborne, Keanu Carver, Haven Heights, Dion Lennox, Lusa Crustafino, Marth Bourne, Trey Bearheel, and Oberfemi. So we have to pick someone. I'm going to go with Tavian Heights. That's the greatest name ever. When Lola Vice went and defeated Tate and Paxley. Made Paxley look a little bit silly Billy. I mean, she proposed this match. She did just stomp Lola's back into the ring apron at one point, which looked really uncomfortable. And even after she charged at Lola and Vice had kind of reversed it, Peyton still turned it into a bomb of power. She got the one, two, ooh. I think Paxley forgot she had a leg though, so Lola started to work over that. And when she kept wiggling out of the submissions, Vice was like, all right, I'm going to kick you, I'm going to kick you, I'm going to kick you. And I'm going to boot you right in the skull. And she must have knocked Tatum out. One, two, three. So really, she's on a feel-good ride right now because she's in a great spot. She's got that contract and she's picking up victories. So I suppose we have to give her an up. Like, she's not a particularly nice person, but she's very good at this professional wrestling. Axiom and when Nathan Frazier were then chatting backstage after last week's show. And even though they're sort of friends, this is the most passive-aggressive conversation you've ever seen in your life. Nathan was sad after getting wrecked by Ilya Dragunov, but Axiom was like, well, it was kind of your fault, dude. You did poke the bear and maybe you want to wear this mask to protect your face. Nathan was like, I don't appreciate this. Maybe you should leave. It then essentially turned into a buddy scrap because they are going to have this match later, but they will still be pals afterwards. <laughs> this axiom. He actually acted like his mask was really his face because he doesn't want to upset the moneymaker. So he's a bit of a strange individual, but I did laugh. Baron Corbin then also arrived late to the building, but I was like, yeah, I expect it from this guy. He hasn't been showing any respect for anyone. Once again, Ilya Dragunov, this did not look good for you. It also feels like Baron has deliberately been playing mind games since this feud began. And come deadline at the weekend, I actually think he may become the NXT champion. And speaking of former champions, the flub is going on with Carmelo Hayes. So we got more of that security footage and who the hell is leaking that. And it showed Carmelo and Trick Williams having a chat. And as soon as Williams left the room, what did Carmelo do? He messaged someone. Now the insinuation was maybe it was Lexus King who he was communicating with. So now the plot thickens. So I am worried about this. I really am. Because Trick Williams and Carmelo Hayes are meant to be the best of buddies. But now they are slowly falling out. And this is going to get worse before the night is over. And if it turns out Carmelo did do this... How am I ever meant to trust anybody ever again? When it does come to being nice to people, though, maybe don't be nice to Joe Gacy. Because he's been having quite the wild few weeks, and here, he was behind the commentators, and he was just yelling at Vic Joseph, Man, I love you. Boy, do I love you. What? I don't really want to know what the hell is wrong with this guy, and why was he allowed to stay in his seat? He was definitely being too boisterous. Maybe people are just a little bit scared of him. It was back to the action after this, though, because it was the metaphor versus the Alpha Academy. And they just had a really competitive fun fight. We had gone all in with this too because it was Chad Gable, Otis and Maxine Dupree taking on Oro Mensa, and Noam Dar and Lash Legend. Let's just get to the good bit. At one point, Otis was rocking and rolling and giving caterpillars to people when he got smacked in the face and he turned around. Lash Legend gave him this slam. Now, she didn't just pick him up and be all like... Ugh, ugh. She picked him up and she held him there for a good two seconds. So that was a damn impressive. It also tied into what was next. Eventually, Legend was knocked off the apron and she fell into Otis's arms. Lash. <laughs> she wasn't into this at all. She definitely ain't gonna go on a date. Dupree also dived off Gable's shoulders to take out everybody on the outside, which is when Chad Gable was like, oh yeah, there's no Amdar. He's most definitely got an ankle and he locked on the ankle lock. And he got the tap out win. This just goes to show you that karma will always work in this life. Because of course Noam screwed him over in the Heritage Cup. So this just restored my faith in life. Oh, thank goodness for that. It's getting it up. Hank Walker and Tank Ledger were then in a bar. And it turned out to be Gallus' bar. And because I suppose Gallus don't want to make a profit. All of these guys fell out. And now soon they're going to have a tag team match. Why not? So I would like to know who the hell was filming this. Because that was a very well placed camera. When we cut to the ring. Byron Saxton was here. He was like, look who I've got next to me. It's all the women from the Iron Survivor Challenge. And I am going to talk to them. 
Like, this is not going to end well at all. I was right as well because they did all individually speak in turn. I was like, no human being would ever do this. I mean, if somebody was throwing jibes at me, I would instantly respond. But fair play to them. They were very patient and they waited for their cue. If I were to guess as well, I kind of think Tiffany Stratton could be the victor in this. And then she could go back after her NXT Women's Championship. And maybe if she fails in that and we get into 2024, she may be called up to Raw or SmackDown. Ooh, lally. Even Saxton got fed up with this when they just started yelling at each other. When Fallon Henley was like, man, what are we even doing? So she walked up to Tiffany, she punched her right in the face. And as I already told you, we've got yet another brawl. There are a ton of these. So of course it does mean it has to get it down. Because NXT management, if you are watching this, what are you doing? Why don't you have any structures in place to try and stop this? I mean, if we go throughout your whole show, especially that parking lot, that ridiculous flipping parking lot... It's just not a working safe environment that it's safe. That was gibberish that just came out of my mouth. But I'm so furious about this. That's why you're getting it down. I expect professionalism and I am not getting it. When Axio and Nathan Fraser kind of fell out, but they kind of didn't fell out. I mean, they had this awesome, amazing match. But yeah, it was getting a little bit heated. Now, I only went about five minutes, but you should watch this. Because they were just flying around the place like it was nothing. When the women from the Iron Survivor Challenge continued this brawl, and it went right into the ring. So the referee was like, well, what am I meant to do? There's now about 92 humans in this thing. I gotta call the whole thing off. So for goodness sake, NXT management, would you please get a hold of this? And just to try and make my point, it's getting it down. I wanted to see this match. And it was stolen away from me. Blair Davenport was really smart as well, though, because she just bailed. She's like, I'm not getting involved in this. I ain't no goober. Actually, it was a massive mistake because somebody had clearly taken over the audio department. Some music started to play. And who made their grand return to NXT? It was Nikita Lyons. She's back. She also went right after Davenport because, of course, Blair had screwed her over before she did leave. So there is a nice thing we could do after deadline. So that I did enjoy. It's nice to see Nikita Lyons back and getting her instant revenge up. It was super sad times next as well. Chase U is not in a good way. So Andre Chase was chatting to his students here and he was like, look, we have lost a bunch of money. I was in trouble and I went to an organization to try and fix our financial situation. It didn't work. And now, yeah, I'm in a lot of bother and the school may close down. So I freaked out. One day I was hoping to study there. Thea Hell was absolutely disgusted by this as well. Although that could be because the rest of the students tried to come up with ideas about how to make money. <laughs> Somebody was like, why don't we do a bake sale? I was like, listen, chief, I'm pretty sure we're talking about millions here. A bake sale's going to make you like a buck. I still feel like there's something going on here. Because even though Andre is putting the blame on his shoulders, I don't think we know the entire situation. And I assume he did borrow money from the D'Angelo family. Hence why they sent him that letter. But look, man. I can't get over this. Of course it has to get it down. Chase U was just like a wonderful positive place that made me feel warm and fuzzy in my tum-tum. Somebody made one mistake and it all came crumbling down. And speaking of worrying scenarios, Trick Williams and Carmella Hayes then met up and they still ain't getting along. Nick Williams must have seen that video from earlier. So he was like, did you message Lexus King to attack me? And Carmelo kind of stood on ceremony here, Mr. Wayne, mostly because he had a match. I don't think he gave a very definitive answer at all. It also led to a Lexus King video that he had done for social media. And he acted like Carmella was friends. Now, he wasn't right on the button here. He basically talked on riddles. But if I was an investigator, would I colour him guilty? You bet your ass. Eddie Thorpe also jumped on this chat bandwagon because he was about to be in a match to try and qualify for the Iron Survivor. And he thinks he's going to do it. So it's like, man, Eddie, I really believed in you. And it turned out he was lying. He also wanted to remind us that he hates Dijak because Dijak had whipped his ass recently. But then we did go into the men's last chance Iron Survivor qualifying thingamajig. And we had Eddie Thorpe. And we had Tyler Bate. And we had Joe Coffey. And we had Carmelo Hayes. And I'll be honest with you, it absolutely rocked. And he was all fired up as well from his promo. So he was kicking ass until he was on the outside. And he ran at Joe Coffey, who spine busted him into Simba the Still Steps. And you'll be surprised to hear that was it for Ed we never saw him again. Tyler then realised he had an opportunity, though, so he started throwing everybody around. But then people were coming off the top ropes and they were just flipping dippy doo dah around the place. When all of a sudden, Tyler took his arm. He was hitting everybody with a cigarette uppercut. He saw Joe Coffey. He slammed him with a lariat. He hit the Tyler driver 97 and he just pinned him. <laughs> kind of came out of nowhere. So I'm absolutely going to give that up because Tyler Bate going into the Iron Survivor makes it all the better. Where once again... <laughs> 
I have to yell at NXT management. Dijak just walked out yelling at everyone because of course he's going to be in the Iron Survivor. As he saw Eddie Thorpe on the floor, he gave him a boot. And I suppose backstage the whisperings did begin because all of a sudden Bron Baker was here and then Trick Williams was here and Josh Briggs was here. And they were all like, whoa, we're fighting on Saturday night. So once again, it's another brawl and it's getting it down. By this point, I was looking at the people in the audience going, they must be scared. They didn't come here to see such out of control hoodoo and out of control shenanigans. And now when you buy a ticket, for NXT should come with a warning. In terms of getting you pumped up for the Iron Survivor, though, it did a pretty good job, especially because right after this, Trick Williams just said, Carmelo Hayes, give me an answer. Carmelo said, no, I did not pay off Lexus King to do nothing. There was no ifs, buts, or maybes here, and Carmelo has even gone out there and booked himself in a match against Lexus King for deadline. <laughs> Trick still wasn't happy because he was like, oh yeah, well, you may be opening the show, but I'm closing it. That was definitely a jibe. I don't think in 2024 they're going to be friends anymore. When we moved into the last thing we were going to see on this week's show, and it was a big chat between Ilya Dragunov and Baron Corbin, flubbed me sideways. They were having a chat in the ring, which is very professional, and Dragunov was telling Baron, I don't like that you've made this professional. I have told you I'm trying to do this with my family, so why don't you just respect it? Corbin literally laughed that off because he thought it was a pile of crap, and he was like, you keep talking about your son, and you keep talking about your family, but you say you've sacrificed for them, but you haven't. It's an excuse. You've abandoned them, and really, if you look at the situations, what you're doing to your boy is exactly what your father did to you. I was like, damn, man, why don't you hold back? This sent Elio off, who was about to murder Baron Corbin, but he didn't want to because he wants to wait till Saturday, as he called Baron Corbin a materialistic son of a bitch. But once again, this was like kissing a wall because Baron didn't care. To the point, he grabbed the table that was in the ring, he put it in the corner, and he turned his back to Elio. He goes, go on then. You want to attack me? Why don't you attack you? I'm giving you the opportunity. I'll just wait here and find out. I was right as well, because with the cadence of a serial killer, Elia whispered into his ear, the only one that can destroy a dragon is the dragon himself. I was like, wait a minute, I thought you were a human. What's going on? It's a truly insane thing to stay, though, and it totally stunned Baron when they stared into each other's eyes with the power of a thousand suns. The Iron Survivor men then pulled back out to ringside, so I was face palming. I was like, not now, NXT management. you got to get this under control. Because that table was still set up in the corner. So what did Bron do? He just speared Trick Williams right through it. Tyler Bate then took out everybody as NXT went off air, so that was a big tease. But i got to tell you this. If you were into big fight feels, you've got to go and watch the Elia Dragon off Baron Corbin stuff. It got me totally revved up, and as I've already told you, Baron Corbin should win the NXT Championship. And when he comes back to Raw SmackDown, this is the person I want him to be. I know he was broke a while back, and that kind of knocked him off track, but he has found himself again... Really, really good. Giving it up. And I'm taking my kayfabe hat off. I've got a stupid red line on my head because that thing is so damn tight. Just to let you know, reality, this episode is going to get an up. This is the kind of go-home show you should do when you've got a pay-per-view down the line. It totally rocked. So make sure you tune into Deadline and make sure you click the video on the screen right now for ups and downs for Monday Night Raw. Engage with the video as much as you can and take care, my friends. Goodbye.